What is the most devious revenge you got on a Karen? I worked as a trainer for a very popular cell phone company for a while. I would regularly visit cellular carriers, do events for customers, and train employees on relevant new features and items. So I was almost always dressed very well. The most dressed down I ever got was a polo, dress pants, and dress shoes because I wanted to give a good and professional impression. However, my style of dress came with the greatest Karen bait known to man, a silver name tag. I had finished up later than usual and was browsing the groceries for the next couple of days at a supermarket whose logo was a bullseye. I was browsing some spices, debating on if I had enough of a few kinds to make chili when I heard a faint noise behind me. I squeeze in a bit closer, ensuring I'm not blocking the aisle. There is no sense in being rude, right? A second or two go by, and my spider sense tingles. And then, I hear the dreaded sound that in the retail wilderness is both terrifying and amusing. Excuse me? Ah, uh, yes. The mating call of the wild Karen. I turn around to see a specimen of at least 40 years of age trying desperately to be mistaken for her own daughter in what I can only assume was a pair of yoga pants, furry boots, a shirt that was strategically unbuttoned, and a huge pair of sunglasses acting as a solar panel for her let me speak to your manager haircut. My desperate plea for clemency in the form of her own ability to notice a mistake came immediately as I pushed my cart further away and swept my arm where I was standing, sorry. Didn't know I was blocking them, I say. But alas, Karen did not want to graze the spice rack. You see, she had used her cosmic powers on me without my realizing. Because now I was no longer shopping for dinner. I had been granted employment. And Karen was not pleased with my performance so far. No. I need you to help me find something. It seems to be lost on Karen that the store uniform is khakis and a red shirt. I am wearing a blue and white dress shirt, dress pants, and a company logo jacket that doesn't look like an employee's. I assume she's perhaps dazzled in bright lights without her solar panel glasses guarding her beady eyes, so I smile and politely say, I'm sorry. I don't work here. Her eyes narrow, now looking like the shining black of a shark, and the games have begun you're wearing a uniform, don't give me that attitude. You can put up that garbage when you're done doing your J-O-B done, why eyebrow rises, and I hear the ringside bell in my head. Okay, Karen, game on. So with my best voice and smile, I say, what was it you needed help finding, ma'am? I see the flinch. I said ma'am, and she didn't like it. Don't show weakness now, we've only started. But in the same condescending tone, she wails. I need to find a watermelon. Now show me to it. I nod and push my cart along as I head to the rear of the store. She doesn't look pleased that I'm bringing the cart, but if she says anything, she does so under her breath. And I know soon enough she'll have plenty to complain about. So I savor the moment where the only sound is the slap slap of her boots ricocheting off the floor and on the heels of her feet inside. I walk several aisles. After a dozen, she starts to huff and puff and I can hear the faintest grumbling about why it was so hidden away, and why did she have to walk so far, and so on. It's not directed at me, but I'm not deaf, so I can hear her childish tantrums just fine. Thank God she can't see the evil smile on my face. Assing the last row of groceries, I hang a left. Assing candies, luggage, travel, and so on. She's behind me in such a blurry huff of muttering anger. I don't know if she's questioning the marital status of my parents, the life choices that brought her here, or both. But she's not happy, and it sounds more and more like a car that won't start and less like a person talking to themselves. As we reach the book section, I will the cart right over and start down an aisle. Now Karen is really angry. Where the heck are you going? I'm looking for a watermelon. If you're too stupid to find it, then maybe I should be talking to your manager. This is drawing a crowd from the nearby electronics section. My plan is working out better than I'd hoped. I grab a thin copy of a toddler's first spelling book in front of the children's section. A few letters are playing with a small child on the cover, and the title about learning the first few letters of the alphabet. Perfect. Walking back to the red-faced Karen, I offer the book. I don't say anything. I just extend my arm, showing her the cover. Like most people would. She takes the offered book, looks at it, looks at me, and growls, what the heck is this? Are you stupid? Where is your manager? You're absolutely awful. 
Her wailing has attracted at least two employees who seem to recognize the whiny wails of the retail native Karen. One is on a small radio, calling who I assume is the manager, while another is coming our way with that terror in their eyes that only an entitled middle-aged woman with an attitude problem can cause. With a smile, I gesture to the book in her hands and say in my absolute best customer service voice, Actually, ma'am, I thought since you can't tell the difference between a customer and an employee, you must not be able to read. So I figured this book can help. Stunned? Silence. When the employee finally made it to us, they were unaware of what I said, only that I was smiling in a customer service kind of way. Karen was still all mouth agape at what I said when they tried a polite greeting. Hello? Is there something I can help with tonight? Karen was livid. She threw the book at me and started screaming. I dodged the book as her howls of rage wound up. How dare you talk to me that way? I want this man's manager right now. He needs to be fired. Oh no. She still didn't get the point. Maybe I should have started with an easier book? Dr. Seuss? Maybe something on tape? She hasn't slowed down. Is cussing like a rabid honey badger high on substances? And somewhere in that string of expletives were words that vaguely made a caveman type sense. Short phrases, mostly. The employee is trying desperately to put out the fire that is Karen. Her face is so red I swear smoke is coming from that horrible dye job, and the distant employee on the walkie-talkie is obviously begging for a manager or a priest. When the manager arrives, the woman is pulled to the side, and he speaks to her, trying to calm her down. The employee standing near me looks at me and, with a bewildered look, asks, What happened? Not wanting to spoil the punchline, I just kind of made a face and softly said, didn't the haircut clue you in? Big mistake. The employee chirps with laughter, and he quickly chokes off. I don't think he expected me to know the dorsal plumage of the wild Karen. But Karen heard the sound and went from slowly lowering to a shrill string of complaining back to seething anger. Once again, she all but frothed at the mouth. After another few minutes, the manager gets her to step aside and comes over to talk to me. He begins asking all sorts of questions she obviously decided to embellish. Did you throw a book at her? Were you following her? Things like that. Things that could be claimed with only the closest concept of reality. So, in a pleasant voice, I explained how I was shopping, and she demanded I show her where an item was and refused to accept that I didn't work there. This caused the manager to frown as he looked at me. He saw how I was dressed, and I think some light in his eyes actually died. He probably realized he had to think worse of humanity than just five minutes ago, and it took another piece of his soul. I've been there. So I smile and nod as I see his reason out that I was basically kidnapped to find something for this woman, and all the tumblers in his mind seem to fall into place. He must have seen this type of thing often enough to know what happened or close enough. But I nod and say, since she can't read and might be colorblind, I got her a book on the alphabet instead. I figured if she knew how to read, it would fix all her problems. She threw the book at me, cussed like a sailor, and wanted you to fire me. Maybe I should have gotten something in crayon. The employee, standing nearby, is done for. He begins to laugh, hysterically. Full belly laughs that send him retreating for a door to their back room nearby. Even as he fades from sight, I can still hear the echoes of his laughter. It seems the manager, a seasoned veteran of the retail wars, manages to make his initial chuckle sound like a disapproving grumble at the retreating employee. But the way his face scrunched up, I know full well he found it at least reasonably funny. Karen is mad that the employee is laughing, having at least the sense to know she's the butt of the joke. Even if she didn't hear said joke, turning with an admirably straight face, the manager holds up a hand and silences her through his Karen charming powers. Ma'am again her eye twitches. I'm going to have to ask that you stop harassing other shoppers and keep the volume down. A vein in her forehead begins to leap from the skin and do a little dance as she wins herself up for another tirade. He was the one harassing me. She almost reaches around him, jabbing her $2.99 press-ons at me like the predatory talons she wishes they were. The manager, not happy with basically having her almost trying to wrap herself around him to get to me, holds up his hands and, in a very firm voice, says, Ma'am, you need to calm down. If you can't, then I'll have to ask you to leave. Oh no. At this point, she was about to become a captive audience. The manager called for someone in the clothing department 
and overwalked two women who, God bless them, managed to wrangle the woman and begin escorting her to the front. The employee who'd walked away laughing came over and escorted me back to the grocery aisle and told me that she was going to be detained and barred from the store. He was in a good mood, except maybe having to clean up her tantrum, and we joked about the vast level of stupidity we'd been graced to see. A few minutes later, I checked out and was walking to the door when two police walked in, rather annoyed looking. I left with a smile on my face.